for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It also says in Romans 15, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. Y'all, we're in a house that we have pastors that preach good things and they don't want us to be an ignorant church. So they are equipping us for intentional non-stop growth so father we thank you for the coverings that we have lord jesus that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world we thank you father that you said in exodus 14 14 the lord will fight for you you need only to be still you said in isaiah 40 30 29 40 29 you said but call on me you said in isaiah 40 29 but those who hope in the lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint father we bless you you said in your word accent it shall be given seeking ye shall find knocking the door shall be open for everyone that acts shall receive and he that seeks shall find so father we're asking you today come down in this place today rend the heavens open have your complete way father we thank you for the new thing that you're doing in this place Y'all begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. If you have your heavenly language, start to pray. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Stand up and start giving God praise. Hallelujah. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Everybody. Come on, y'all. Come on. Hey, is everybody all right? We good? Bless the Lord at all times. So his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Y'all, come on. What is y'all? What everybody okay? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a house of life. This is a house of power. This is a house of faith. This is a house of expectation. So one of the number one things that we can do to get the presence of God in is just open up our hearts to say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you for my life. God, I thank you that I'm in my right mind. God, I thank you for health and strength. God, I thank you for peace. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my family. I thank you that I got food on my table. I thank you that I got a home over my head. I thank you that I got a church family I'm connected to. I thank you for everything you're doing. I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for everything that you're about to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you as the Alpha and the Almighty. We honor you as the beginning and the beloved. We honor you as the Christ and the cornerstone. We honor you as the door and the deliverer. We honor you as the elect and the everlasting. We honor you as the faithful and the forgiver. We honor you as the grace and the glory. We honor you as the healer and the holy one. We honor you as the icon and the Emmanuel. We honor you as the just and the Jehovah. We honor you as the king and the kinsman redeemer. You are the lion, the love, and the lamb. You are the mediator and the messiah, the navigator and the Nazarene, the omniscient and the omnipotent. You are the prince of peace. You are the question and the answer, the redemption and the resurrection, the son and the savior, the tried, the tested, the unlimited understanding, the vision and the victory, the wisdom and the word. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. We celebrate you. We say, Holy Spirit, come. We bind every mind-binding spirit in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit of distraction right now. We spirit of focus right now we lose we bind every spirit of fear we lose a spirit of faith we bind each and every spirit of worry we leave we lose a spirit of certainty holy spirit touch every seat touch every crack touch every crevice touch every part of this room we welcome you to bring life into this place we welcome you to bring in this place we welcome you to bring expectation in this place we welcome we welcome you to bring power into this place we welcome you to bring healing into this place we welcome you to bring wholeness in this place father prepare our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth let us know exactly who you are in our hearts right now father we thank you right now for opening up doors that no man can shut we thank you right now for giving opportunities that man has not even thought about in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, make us the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. We ask you right now, Holy Spirit, we give you the right to rest, to rule, to reign, 
ask you to come. We know that you inhabit the praise of your people. If you inhabit praise, then that means that Satan inhabits complaints. If you inhabit praise, Satan inhabits complaints. So we bind every complaining spirit. We bind every mediocre spirit. We bind every lukewarm spirit. And we say, Holy Spirit, release an anointing of worship to fall down on this place right now. In Jesus' name, let's worship, y'all. Let's go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Do me a favor. I know we're going to have a greeting in a moment, but just look on this side and this side. Look on this side and just wave and say, hey, good morning. What's up? We back in the house of the Lord once again. Let's go, Lee. Yeah. Let's have fun. Y'all ready to have fun in the presence of God? Y'all ready to praise God? Oh, this side kind of right now. This is my side over here. Y'all ready? Now, don't y'all be acting funny this morning. <laughs> Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Come on. Let's go. Let's do it, Josh. Let's go. Two, uh, one, two.
Culture. Yep. Hey, um, come out of offense. Hey, hey, um, come out of sickness. Hey, hey. get up out of that grave. Y'all, y'all excited 
about Jesus. Let me ask you something. Do you realize you out there grave? Do you realize ain't nothing holding you? If anything is holding this, it's your fault. Because you got the power and the authority to change it. You got the power and authority to speak to it. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the y'all ain't saying nothing. I know it's been a week, but hey, we back on schedule. God never get off schedule. Woo! That was good right there. I'm going to use that right there from now on. God never gets off schedule because he's been good to us. He keep on waking us up every morning. So if you can just lift your hands and just worship God. I serve a big God. I serve a mighty God. So since we serve an awesome God, Father, you can have my heart. You can have my soul. You can live in me. You can be Lord over my life. You can be Lord over my life. Pastor, you was talking about last Sunday, you said it's important that we hear the voice of God. And I was studying the word this week and I was talking to God. I said, God, I don't care how gifted, I don't care how anointed I am, I don't want to miss your voice. Don't let me get prideful, don't let me get beside myself. My mama used to tell me all the time, son, God got a way of humbling you down when you get beside yourself. I thank God for a praying mother that taught me, hey, boy, don't you get beside yourself. It's God that's using you. But then when I really got relationship with myself, I can hear God say, hey, boy, don't you get beside yourself. Pull yourself together because I want God to be Lord over my life. You can have my heart. Just look up towards heaven and say, Father, you can have my heart. It says, your love with no reservations. You're not looking for perfection. And there's no need for me to pretend. And I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. You can have my full attention. Nothing less than my devotion. Hey! Speak to me and I will listen. And I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody all over the building say, oh, oh, part oh, 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 you can have my heart. There you go. You can have my heart. I hear your audience. Everybody, come on, say, oh, 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 you can have. full attention hey. nothing less than my devotion and God you can just speak to me and I will listen hey. and I'll give you everything I'll give you everything let me say it praise the
it, hey, you got it, hey, if you want my heart, you got it, you got it, everybody say, you got it, you got it, if you want my heart, you got it, I never dare you lift your hands right here on this one, I gotta say it first, if you want my you got it if you want my yes you got it you got it if you want my yes if you want my yes you got it you got it I got one more for y'all I gotta say right here if you want my mind you got it you got it if you want my mind, huh, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. If you want my mind, you, want my mind, you, got, it, you got it, you got it. If you want my mind, yeah, you got it. If you want my mind, you got it, you got it. If you want.
Another day, you just lift your hands and just do it like this. Come on, just surrender yourself. Come on, surrender yourself to him. There you go. We say yes, we say yes to you. 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 Wait a minute. Can I do this? Milo, can you say it? C-S, C-S, T. Sing, Milo. Sing, Milo. We say yes, we say yes to it. Sing, Milo. We say yes, we sing say it for your yes to it. Yeah. We say yes, we say yes to it. We say yes, we say yes to it. Oh. We say yes, we say yes to it. There you go, Milo. We say yes, sing it, Keisha. we say sing it, yes sing it, Keisha. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, parts, everybody, we see yeah, everybody. We see yes, we say yes to you. Hey. We see yes, we say yes to you. Everybody, we say yes, we say yes to I see y'all on this side. Come say on. yes, we say yes to We say yes, we say yes, we say yes to We give him our heart, say yes, we say yes to We give him our mind, yeah. Say yes, we say yes to listening and I feel like the Lord is speaking. One of the reasons why we are a house of worship is because we are focused on relationship and not religion. My God. May I submit to you that Jesus went to the cross for relationship. Yes, sir. He didn't go to the cross for religion. My God. Now listen to me now. Now watch this. When Jesus goes to the cross, he says, I'm going to give all of my life so that my father can get an opportunity to have all of our lives. So when he go to the cross and give his life and we accept him as personal Lord and personal Savior, that means that our yes is not part of our lives. Come, come on, don't, don't shout me down now. See, because I think a lot of times we sing stuff and it sounds good, but we don't really, really take into consideration the fullness of what he's asking for. He said, if I was willing to give all of me, what are you waiting on for you to give all of you? Because watch this, watch this, watch this. You can't do with you what I can do with you. My God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you could, you would need me. This is what he's saying, not me, him. Right? So, in your best thinking, in your best deciding, in your best actions, you only can go so far. My God, my God. But when I say my yes, you can have all of me. This is when God says, okay, I can have all of you. Now here's all of my purpose for you. We really don't get all of the purpose that he has for us until we get, he gets all of us. And so your yes turns into a whole nother thing. It's not just in a religion. Religion is I come to church on Sunday and I go to brunch. That's just what I do. I, 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 I make me a couple posts on Facebook or what I learned at the church and that's just what I do. Then I go back to whatever I feel like doing. But relationship. May, may I submit to you if the spirit of God is in you and you have relationship he speaks to you you know he speaks to you you speak back to him and there is a engaging. Yes, sir. There is a fellowship. 
There is a relationship. There is an intimacy. And when I say yes, my yes don't hurt me. Some of us are afraid to say yes because we are afraid of the hurt that's going to come behind the yes. So, so, so watch this. It's either I got a yes for religion or a yes for relationship. Ask yourself the question, which yes am I giving? Because if I give it for religion, then I do it. I say yes and I sing and I do all this. And then I just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> but when I say yes for relationship, oh, I do what he called me to do. Oh my God. Freedom is not, I got the ability to do whatever I want to do. Freedom is, I can do the confines of what he's telling me to do because it's protecting me, prospering me, and growing me. Yes, God. Yes, God. So when I say yes, Ain't no stress with this yes. When I say yes, ain't no struggle with this yes. When I say yes, watch this, ain't no pretending. What you see is what you get. Watch this, not just up here. It's also that same thing right here. Which yes are you saying? <laughs> my God, my God. <laughs> what do you do when you're saying yes? But even though you're saying yes, it's like God is still not moving on your behalf. Because sometimes, Pastor James, we are saying yes, but there are parts of us that if God moved right at our yes, what we would think was a blessing would really be a burden. So he says, I hear your yes, but there's some changes that I need attached to your yes. Because where I'm taking you, that yes is a dangerous yes. I need a sincere yes. I need a holy yes. I need a yes that is an uncompromising yes. A yes that when you get in a room with people that don't look like you, can I still trust your yes? Some of us have these yeses, but the motive of our yes is not connected to him. You can have a prophetic word over your life and you are saying yes, but the yes is still not coming into fruition. And it's not because the word is false. It's because your actions are not aligned with what God is saying. Pastor James, the other week at work, I got a paper cut. Didn't cut my finger off. I just had a paper cut. And the paper cut hurt. And I said, the paper cut is small. And the Holy Spirit says, does it still hurt? I said, yes. He said, that's how I look at sin. You all are so busy looking at the outward sin and the big sin. But when you hurt me with unforgiveness, when you hurt me with unkindness, oh when you don't have the fruits of the Spirit, it's just like a paper cut. It still hurts. No fruit. He's coming after the things that the public can't see. He say that again. He's coming after the things the public can't see. There is a prophecy that is over Houston where they talk about revival is coming to hit the place. But God is going to revive those that have his spirit. Because you can come alive and be alive in the devil. If you're not alive in Christ, then you will pollute what's already happening right That's now. Right. That's right. He's coming after the things that we think that are a secret. They may be a secret to someone, but they are not a secret to him. Hallelujah. You all can take your seats. Say yes, say yes. Y'all lucky I can't sing. We say yes, we say yes to you. We'll say yes, we we'll say yes to you. What I love about God is that he's patient and kind. He'll allow it to be a paper of a cut before it becomes the removal of your finger. We're getting prepared to take the Lord's Supper. But Pastor James, I know God is talking to me about internal things that people are battling with. I know that he is 
Can I share this? You Go just ahead, you just said something that just so this morning. Oh, the Lord started dealing with Tiffany. I was gonna tell it. And Tiffany woke me up four o'clock, whatever it may be. And yeah. the Lord gave her a direct word for us to start praying in the spirit. This is what happened to me. We started praying in the spirit, and I think probably like probably like I think I may have been praying for about 45 minutes. And all of a sudden, listen to this. This is for somebody. I know it without a shadow of a doubt. I heard a conversation of some women, and the women was in the conversation talking about if they should go see some tarot card readers or palm readers. My God. I heard it as clear as day. It was like, I'm playing in the spirit. Then all of a sudden, I heard a conversation. My God. And it was like, girl, I went over there, and the first time, like, it was uncomfortable, but they told me, that I'll be married in the next seven to eight years. And it was some, inf and, and whoever she was talking to, she was talking to another woman who was like, you, had, you got one foot in and one foot out, whether you want to go and uh, deal with the tarot cards or the palm readers. But I heard the conversation as clear as day. Then I heard the Lord say this, go to Transforming Faith, tell them these words. I heard your conversation. And what the Lord wants you to know is this, is that if you deal with, with any other spirit besides the Holy Spirit, you're opening up a door Absolutely. to demonic spirits. I had a dream last night. Won't give the whole version of it. But in the dream, I was trying to get to church. But every single time I made a move, there was like this delay in the spirit. So much to the point that when I got to my car, walking to the car, in the dream, my car was towed and I had to go into the tow place to get the car. But when they got the car, when I got the, to the place in, the, in the, the tow place, the cars were stacked and somehow my car ended up dropping like 10 feet. It dropped and then it bounced. And I heard the mechanic say, the car will drive, but it has a hairline fracture to the engine. Jesus. Immediately when I heard that, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the paper cut. The paper cut is a small, just little slit where it hurts. A hairline fracture is just a little bitty crack. But over time, if I put something, germs in the paper, clip, in the paper cut, it can begin to spread and it can become infectious. If I continue to drive a car with a hairline fracture and I don't get the engine fixed, eventually the engine will go out. And so I begin to say, God, what is happening? He says many things are being delayed in the spirit because people are dealing with sins that they think are small that are like a paper cut or like a hairline fracture. And if I take them and they begin to move like an engine, at some point the engine is going to stop and it's not going to work. I woke up out of the dream and I said, Lord, I'm praying. He says, Tiffany, wake up and pray in the spirit. This is the honest to God's truth. But I was tired. But I told y'all, I always give God my yes. So when I rolled over, I said, oh God, I'm just going to look. Okay, Jesus, I trust you. Okay, that was going to be my little prayer. He says, wake up. Pastor James, because he's so gracious and so he's, because he's so kind, I have a little dog that sleeps in a crate next to me. Bentley woke up at 420 and randomly threw up right when I turned back around to go to sleep. And because I heard him, I woke up and the Holy Spirit says, get up right now. Him throwing up was really my signal to wake you up because I need you to pray in the spirit now. So I got up, Pastor James, cleaned up the stuff, and then started walking around the house and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to touch every single door in this house that has an entry and has a closing. He says, because what's been delayed in the spirit by your act of touching every door, I am now opening doors because you hear my voice. Then he said, begin to search your heart and ask yourself, are there anything that's inside of you that is keeping the delay in the spirit? Then when I walk back to the room, I'm very conscious of Sunday mornings, we need rest. The Holy Spirit says, no, no, no. Wake your husband up because I need you all praying in tongues together because it's the agreement that is going to rebuke the enemy. Husband and wise, he's not after your marriage. He's after your agreement. He's not after that. 
He's after because he knows if me and my husband can pray in the Holy Ghost together, we become unstoppable in the spirit. So I woke up and I said, babe, I can't go back to sleep. And I told him my dream. He rolled over and sat up and we laid there and spoke in the Holy Ghost until it was time for us to wake up and come to church because we are contending for something. This all goes back to the yes. What if your yes is delayed because of a paper cut? What if your yes is delayed because of a hairline fracture? Something that seems small to you, but is huge in the spirit. Creating me a clean heart, oh God. Oh God. And renewing me a right spirit. Because where God is taking you, yeah. he needs to be able to trust you. What starts off small can get so big. He's coming after pride. He's coming after unforgiveness. He's coming after ego. He's coming after stinginess. He's coming after selfishness. He's coming after things that you cannot stay in unity. It is the agreement with his word. Holy Spirit, calm. Y'all, we're not here to play church. If this is your first time here, I'm here to tell you I got better things that I can do with my time. He is still holy. And we don't get the right to bring him our mess and just say, God, this is just how I am. This is just how you made me. He literally died so that his spirit could come and live inside of you. So whatever is not right and not like him, it is not even you doing it on your own. It is the Holy Ghost inside of you that's telling you, straighten up, get it right. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, we honor you. And God, I hear you. Search our hearts. Don't allow us to make your death and resurrection a mockery. For you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. We are healed from every affliction. We are healed from every addiction. We are healed from everything, God, that we don't think that we can do in our power, God. We are healed because of your sacrifice. Now strengthen us with supernatural grace that you put on us to do what we cannot do on our own. For we are in a season where exposure is a good thing if we are exposed in you. Lord, we honor you. Purify us. Sanctify us. Lord, allow us to remember our first love. Teach us how to love you, how to worship you. For whatever, whoever we worship, that's what we become, God. We become what we behold. Let us create a sanctuary for you in our hearts. God, forgive us. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy Spirit, thank you. It reaches to the highest mountain. Holy Spirit, come. And it flows, and it flows to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, the blood. That gives me strength from day to day. It would never know. Oh, it
lift your hands right there to the Lord. Valley. Everybody say, oh yeah. Everybody been served? Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Boy, I start thinking about how that blood come down to that penitentiary. When I was in a reprobate mind, and the Lord gave me another chance my God. to reconnect my life back to him again. It all happened by the blood of Jesus. Yes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you got to be grateful that God didn't give you over to you. My God, thank you, Jesus. Thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you for not giving me over to myself. The worst thing God can do it's saying you want you here you go you can have you because man separated from God is pure deep destruction just just hey hey don't get man let me just get a little bit of understanding that if I call on you you will make the exchange for me don't get me over to myself is everybody good has everybody has everybody been served Everybody's good. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at verse 11, starting at verse 23, he says, In the same night, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, this is how we know. 
that one of the required preliminary conditions for the presence is through giving thanks. Yes, sir. We learn this in communion. He's in the presence of the disciples and he's telling them, I'm getting ready to go. But before we commemorate and celebrate this, let's do this. Give thanks. Give thanks for everything he's done. Give thanks for everything he's doing. Give thanks for everything he's about to do. Give thanks for the healing that's about to take place in your body. Give thanks for the reconciliation that's about to take place with your family. Give thanks to the restoration that's about to take place with your marriage. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. In communion, it's an opportunity for healing and wholeness. Give thanks. When he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may be eating. The broken body of Jesus is a representation of Jesus being broken for every disease, every sickness, every pain, or every ailment in your body. As you are taking communion, thank God for your healing. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup out of the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant, the new permanent arrangement of my blood. This do as often as you drink it. Drink this in remembrance of me. You may drink. Father, in Jesus' name, we celebrate the death. We celebrate the burial. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. We thank you that you went on the cross so we can be whole. You thank, we thank you that you went on the cross so we can be healed. We thank you that you went on the cross so we can receive the peace in God, the peace of God and the peace with God. We thank you that you went on the cross so we can have victory for sin. We thank you that you went on the cross so we can be free and delivered from every trespass, every iniquity, every transgression, and every idol. We thank you that you went on the, you went on the cross to prosper us. Yes, God. So in the name of Jesus, I bind every mind-binding spirit in the mind right now. And I thank you right now for the peace of God falling from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. I speak to everybody that's under the sound of my voice and I say bodies be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. His body was broken simply because for every sickness, every ailment, every disease and I curse counsel right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I celebrate and I appreciate the healing power of Jesus for Julie Gray's body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You said in Psalms 107 and 20, we can send the word to heal. So we send the word of healing to a body. We say, cancer, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We curse you right now and we speak that the cervical cancer right now will shrivel up and die in our body. We speak to her pelvis and we say pelvis be healed in Jesus name. We speak to the uterus. We say uterus be healed in Jesus name. We speak right now to the small intestines, to the large intestines. We say be healed in Jesus name. We speak to the kidneys. We say kidneys be healed in Jesus name. We speak to the lungs. We say lungs be healed in Jesus name. We speak to the heart. We say heart be healed in Jesus name. We speak right now to every form of every muscle and every tissue in her body right now and we believe God for the healing power of Jesus we send the word of the miraculous we send the word of the supernatural to heal her body and to heal every single body that is under the sound of my voice that is an ailment right now in Jesus name Send the fire of God to burn it out right now. Burn out the sickness. Burn out the disease. Burn out the ailment right now in Jesus' name. We celebrate the broken body and the shedding blood because healing is the children's bread. Yes, God. The finished works of the cross 
is a manifestation of the miracles that we will walk in on this day. Holy Spirit of revival, hit this place. Holy Spirit of resurrection, hit this place. Holy Spirit of restoration, hit this place right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let everybody that's under the sound of my voice give God a hand clap of praise and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, you may take your seats. May I submit to you that taking communion and fellowshipping with the broken body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus is not a church thing. Did y'all hear what I just said? It's not just a church thing. Are you with me? It's a relational thing. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, we are here at the transforming chamber. To all the youth in the transforming chamber, you see youth pastor Marcus to my left. You can follow him out right now. It is your opportune time. It's on you for transforming yeah. chamber. You can go into the chamber this morning. This is our youth ministry to ladies and gentlemen. We have a youth. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come on, man. Come on. Man, it's a whole heap of them, too. Good gracious almighty. Yeah. To the transforming chamber, we speak blessings of wisdom. We speak blessings of revelation. We speak blessings of understanding over everybody's life to everybody that's in the back that may feel like you want to come get closer you can come get closer right now and if y'all don't mind could y'all please as the people are getting closer could you just move over just a tad if you don't mind let the people who want to get closer let them come to get closer to everybody that's under the sound of my voice ladies and gentlemen y'all know last week we had been uh we had the week before was easter we had a conference last week, had the Freedom Conference last week. I think I preached, I preached about three times during the Freedom Conference the week before that. Bible study, it was a whole lot going on. And so last week, I knew without a shadow of a doubt, after I preached on Sunday, I needed to just take a rest. <laughs> needed to. I hope y'all don't want me to take a rest. <laughs> May I ask, I'm saying the refueling of the anointing happens in rest. Absolutely. I don't know who this is for, but maybe we ain't prospering like we should be because we want rest. Rest, yeah. If God worked for six days and rest seven, who you think you are? You got me? Because when you don't rest, you can't get fresh thoughts. Can't hear the voice as fresh as you would hear it. You can't get on the rhythm of your spirit if you are not in rest. And so I took last week off. And uh, on this week, I need to take this week off too on this Sunday. They looking like, what? Y'all should be praying. Like, pastor, pray for our pastor to restore strength, restore zeal, restore revelation in the midst of the rest. Fresh revelation in the midst of the rest. And so therefore, can I be honest with you all? The week went by so fast, I kind of got mad. <laughs> like, I ain't get enough rest. Like, soon as I'm coming down from the rest, it's like, here we go. We right back again. So we didn't have Bible study last week because of rest. And so I'm not preaching today because of rest. Okay? All right? But, but may I submit to you all, there is a word in the house. There is a word in the house. I, I just, man, we are in a supernatural culture. We honor the word of God. Can I tell y'all one of the keys to the kingdom, one of the keys to increase, one of the keys to favor? You don't hear nothing else I ever say. Take this. Honor is a key to the increase 
to the favor of God flowing into your life. This means that when you see somebody else getting blessed, when you see somebody else going up, when you see somebody else stepping into something, and you may feel like this was supposed to be my time, may I submit to you, you might be in the midst of a test. What test is that, Pastor James? The test of honor. When you sing, it's supposed to be your time. All you got to do is just illustrate honor and God will make sure that it is your time. But when you don't honor the blessing that is on the person that you see that is going up, when you honor them, what's on them can tend to fall down on you. But when you don't honor and when you think you get mad at God, get mad at life, the enemy has an opportunity to steal a grace, a blessing, or the next level or an open door from you, and you don't even realize it, you're in the middle of a test. May I submit to you all, it's a whole lot of stuff we praying for that we ain't even got to be praying for. You ain't got to pray for what you can just honor yourself into. Are you with me? I said that to say, there is a man of God in the house that we will honor, that we will celebrate, that we will appreciate, that we will love, that we will push the same way as if you pushing me. And his name is Minister Aaron Hingston. Hallelujah. To everybody, so come on, stand up here with me as I introduce you, Hingston, if you don't mind. I met Air, Minister Aaron Hingston back in 2016, 15, something like that. When we started Transforming Faith, I met Minister Hingston then, 215, 216, when we was in the hotel room over in Holiday Inn off West Park. And Minister Hingston came over to do some, some work for us. He got us our, uh, our first pipe and drapes and the stage and everything when we was first starting. Met Hingston then. And of course, uh, you know, Hingston was, he's in ministry, had been in ministry 12, 13, 14 years, something to speak. Executive pastor at another place. All this was going on. And I didn't know that eight years later, seven years later, that me and Minister Hingston would be connecting together to do the work of the ministry here at Transforming Faith Christian Center. So as we begin to come back, we knew without a shadow of a doubt that uh, we needed a connections director in order to fulfill a role in order for us to have the family of the church connected and bonded together. And we was looking for one. And uh, Minister Aaron Hingston name leaped up in Tiffany's spirit, leaped up in my spirit, leaped up in David Wall's spirit all at the same time. God supernaturally put his name in our hearts. And I called David Wall, I said, Dave, man, what do you think? They say, man, Aaron Hingston is written all over this. I say, okay. And so we connected together. We sat down. We talked. And ever since Hingston came here January 1st, 2024, he's been absolutely a blessing. He's been absolutely another level of strength. He's been absolutely a refreshing. He's been absolutely another grace, which is an ability to this house. And it is absolutely refreshing to know that on a, on a week and on a day that I can get rest, I can hand this over to someone that I trust, to someone that I honor, to someone that I value, to someone that I esteem. I said all that to say this publicly today in front of the entire church. If, if Minister Hingston, who's the Connections Director, moving into executive area for Transforming Faith, if he come to you and say anything to you, let it be done, let it be amen, let it be so. Give him the same honor. Give him the same respect. Give him the same esteem as you would give me. Because I am publicly acknowledging him in front of everybody right now that his voice is my voice to Transforming Faith Christian Center. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, 
Mr. Hingston, I love you. I honor you. I celebrate you. Stretch your hands full. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. And we thank you for the minister, for the man of God, for the heart of God of Aaron Hingston. And I say the fresh level of revelation, fresh level of wisdom, fresh level of anointing. Father, that is on me, that is on this house. I speak right now and I release it from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Let his spirit flow like rivers of living water. Give him the mind of Christ. Let him think what you are thinking. Let him speak what you are speaking. Let him decree what you are decreeing. Let him prophesy what you are prophesying. Father, thank you. For my heart being his heart and his heart being my heart. In Jesus' name, let everybody give God a hand clap of praise. He sent it on you. Praise God. Praise God in this place. Come on, lift him up. Give him glory. Magnify his name. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy Give God a hand clap of praise all over this place. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all, you may be seated. Y'all, I just want to know I got set up. I got set up. Hallelujah. Pastor Tiffany said just a few minutes ago, it's a dangerous yes. This lights, camera, action, but behind all of that, this is a dangerous yes. I came in as a connections director, but this is a dangerous yes. Because the mantle that rests here is not a light one. The word that goes forth from this place is not, it's not, it's, it's not easy on the mind or the heart. It causes you to change. It causes you to shift. And as much as I've been a blessing to transforming faith, the word, the man of God, woman of God, the people of God in this house have been a life-changing blessing for me. And so I praise and thank God for each and every one of you all in this place. Hallelujah. Man. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, I got a few housekeeping things. Let me do that because if I don't, then I'll be in trouble. Um, Y'all, I praise and thank God again for Pastor James and Pastor Tiffany. Y'all don't know how much this is. This moment is a refreshing for me. Um, been in ministry years, doing ministry work, um, but I'm in a house now where it's not just about the work, but it's also about my heart. It's not just about what you accomplish, but it's also how is God working in your life. And so I'm grateful, completely grateful. Uh, right here in all of the flowers and the matching flowers my beautiful wife, and y'all know Aubrey. She joined us this morning. Y'all, she's in ministry as well. She sings. Uh, she does praise and worship at another ministry. Amen. And amen. <laughs> there she is. And y'all, I would be in real trouble if I didn't acknowledge that little lady right there on that second row. Y'all, that's my mama. Y'all, she came in from Alexandria, Louisiana to come hang out with me. Next to her, her best friend and, and my surrogate mom, Miss Leona Vincent. Amen. And next to her, my favorite auntie. If I don't say that, then she gonna have a problem. My favorite auntie ain't died. And then my cousins are, are next to her. All right? All right. I got my tribe here with me. All right? So I know I got one, two, three. I know I have six amens if I don't have nothing else. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. We're done with that. Let's praise God on today. All right. Um, yes. The dangerous yes. 
Okay. We're going to look this morning at, um, and you can keep your seats because I'm going to kind of walk through scripture today and uh, we're going to use quite a bit of it because one of the things that I realized about this house is it's built on the word, right? And so we don't have to add a whole lot. We can't take anything from it. All we have to do is deliver the word and the word will do the work. Amen. We invite the spirit in, the word will do the work. Amen. So we praise and thank God. Father, we thank you, God, for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity. God, heal, deliver, and move like you only you can. God, let this word go forth like never before. Heal, set free, and deliver. And when, we, we, when all is said and done, God, we'll be careful to give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to be coming from John 21. Uh, we're not going to pull it up just yet, but John 21, 1 through 17 is where we're going to come from this morning. Y'all, it's a... Um, it's relevant in that it's the time and season that we currently sit in, okay? John 21, to give a little bit of uh, context, this, this scripture is in between the resurrection and Pentecost. And it falls directly in that space between those two moments, which is where we currently sit today. We sit in this same time period between the resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit. In that time period, there was a promise, but there wasn't yet any manifestation. What do you do with the dash? What do you do with the place, the in-between place? This is not even in my message. What do you do with that part that is in between when you received the promise, when, when, when your life was completely rocked because who you knew to be God is now gone and the place where he said he would come back. What about that dash? How do we live in that place and in that time without losing everything he imparted to us while he was here? We're in John 21. So this is a relevant point of time. But what I want to focus on is one of the disciples. One of the disciples, Peter. We're going to talk about Peter because Peter teaches us some life lessons this morning. That's going to get us from this place to that place and get us through that dash. Amen. So his life, if I give you a little foundation about him throughout the Gospels, we see Peter presented as the head of the class, if you would. He's the star pupil. He says, from the first meeting where Jesus finds him at the Sea of Galilee, Peter stands out from the rest. He hears the word. He obeys the word. He receives a miracle from the word. He repents because of his doubt. And then he drops everything and follows Christ. Peter is the man. There was no doubt. There was no missteps. Whatever Jesus told him to do on the first meeting, he did. So Peter is the one who stands out above, head and shoulders above the rest of the crowd. So there's some things about Peter that we're going to see in his life that are part of who he is. And he's publicly blessed. That's our first point. He's publicly blessed. Matthew 16, 15, 15 17 through 15. He said to them, but who do you yourselves say that I am? This is Jesus speaking to Peter. He's speaking actually to all of the disciples. Who do you say that I am? G Peter responds, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Peter has a, a connection with the supernatural already, and so he's already head and shoulders above the rest. So he's publicly blessed. He's publicly blessed. He's also publicly affirmed in Matthew 16, 18 through 19. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So he's publicly affirmed. 
He's been publicly blessed. He's been publicly affirmed. Peter now sits in the place with a whole lot of power. He, he can, he's the man at this point. I'm the rock. You're going to, I have keys. I have access. I can bind and I can loose. He's publicly affirmed and he's been publicly blessed. He's also been publicly favored. Mark 14, 32. They came to a place named Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be very distressed and troubled. He's part of the inner circle, y'all. He's one of the three that are fully connected. Amen. So he's been publicly affirmed, he's been publicly blessed, and he's been publicly favored. One point that I want to give right now, if I, if I just shift just for a second, it's awesome to be publicly affirmed. It's awesome to be publicly blessed. And it's awesome to be publicly favored. But what about being publicly corrected? Is that okay too? Not in this day and age, it's not. Because we live in a time and place where you can affirm me in public, but take me in the back room and correct me. Because pride won't let me look like I'm a failure in front of anybody. But you have no heaven or hell to put me in. But that correction just may put me right back in place. It may reset the bone. But I want to have it done in private. Well, can't nobody see it. Because I don't want to look less than what I've been affirmed in. I don't want to look less than what I've been favored in. I don't want to look less than what I've been blessed by. So handle me in private with that, but handle me in public when you want my when you want praise me. When I'm up on stage, handle me in praise on that. Call my name. But if something's going wrong, if something needs to be corrected, if I need to deal with something. Peter was also handled in public that way, too. So he was handled in public when he was praised, but he was also handled in public when he was rebuked. He's publicly rebuked. In Matthew 16, 23, I gave you the good stuff first. I gave you the stuff that you want to connect with first. Y'all, if y'all like me, y'all connect with good people in the Bible, right? You connect, you know, you know, could connect with the people that, that did something great for God. You connect with David because he's God, he's a man after God's own heart. Right? But you don't connect with him when cheating on Bathsheba. We connect with the good stuff about the people in the Bible. We want to lock into, you know, oh man, come on. I'm going from the pit to the palace. You Joseph all day. But no, you're actually one of the brothers that put him in the pit. Okay, all right. He's publicly rebuked, Matthew 16, 23. Peter took him aside. Now, Peter has nerve enough to rebuke Jesus. Can we just pause right there? There's an angel in this house. Let me just set it straight. There's an angel, angels in this house. Be careful how you speak with them, and how you talk to them. I'm not making out to be idols or gods, but there's a set order in this house, and you're going to speak with them and to them as if you are under that order, or God will deal with you. I didn't get paid for this, but this is the Holy Spirit speaking. We can't go further if we're pulling each other down. And that goes from the top all the way to the bottom. That goes from the parking lot all the way to the pulpit. Amen. Amen. He was publicly rebuked. He said, far be it from you, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. He's talking about him being crucified. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. 
For you do not have in mind the king, the things of God, but the things of men. This is the same Peter that just got the keys to the kingdom. This is the same Peter. But now he's being rebuked because now he's let his pride puff him up. And he stepped into a position that he wasn't granted just yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's publicly rebuked. This didn't happen behind closed doors. That little lady right there said, if you do act up in public, I'm going to get you in public. I, be I believe that's the principle of God. If you act up in public, I'm going to get you in public. Hallelujah. Some of us think we got away with it. Think we got away with it. Just keep thinking. It's coming. It's coming. He was publicly rebuked. He's also publicly offended. Matthew 26 and 31 from the King James Version. Then says Jesus unto them, all you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Offense in this place means scattered. You shall lose it all, your thought, your mind. You shall be so offended that you don't know which way to go. You will not know what to do. And Jesus is telling them, this day, you shall be scattered. You shall be offended concerning me. That's part of the process. Sometimes we have to be offended by God. Sometimes we have to be offended by God. He has to snatch the rug out of our comfort zone. Because if all we do is wait on him to make the move, we will always wait on him to make the move. And sometimes he has to pull the rug out from under us so that we have a better understanding that I have the power, I have the keys, I have the anointing, now I have to activate it. Because as long as he's around, we'll never step into our full understanding of who we are in him. Jesus made a decision to fulfill his purpose. Him making a decision to fulfill his purpose will offend you, but it will cause you to make your purpose a priority. Jesus decided, he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's the only reason why I showed up on the scene. And nobody nor nothing will keep me from it, not even y'all. Not even this three that's next to me, nor the 12 that sit with me. None of you all will keep me from accomplishing my purpose. Because if I don't accomplish it, then you won't accomplish yours. And I will pull the rug out from under your comfort zone just to make sure that you live up to your full expectation in God. He's been publicly rebuked. He's been publicly offended. And he's also publicly outed. Matthew 26, 33 through 20, 34, excuse me. Peter answered him, though they all fall away because of you. This is their pride again. It jumped up on him one more time. Though they were all, y'all, y'all going to fall away. I don't know about what y'all going to do, but y'all are going to fall away, but I won't. That's what Peter's saying. Though they all fall away because of you, I will never, I will never be careful with that never in the face of God. Just raise your hand. How many of you say some nevers? How many of you did those nevers? All right, okay. All right. So we're in good company. Everybody being honest in this place. Because we can't get anywhere if we're not honest. There were some nevers in my life, but those nevers end up, oh, well, let me taste it. Let me try it. Let me look at it. Let me touch it. Let me hold it. Those nevers. I will never fall away. Jesus said to him immediately, Pope, on the spot. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this very night. Before the rooster crows, 
you will deny me not once, not twice, but three times. Look how quick that never went from never to three times in the same day. Has your never ever gone from never to three times in the same day? That's an humbling experience if your heart is in the place to hear God. If it's not, you'll continue to do what you were doing in that same pride that said I would never. He's been publicly rebuked. He's been publicly offended. He's been publicly outed. He's been publicly broken. Luke 22, 55 through 62. This is what he said he would never do. Shortly thereafter. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him said, this man was also with him. But he denied it, saying, woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I'm not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking. (laughs) Y'all, that's a gangster move. On God. Because what happens next? Jesus does this. He... Have you ever been looked at God? Has God ever looked at you in that moment? Have you ever felt the presence of the Lord when you know you had done wrong? And he... Because you said never. Because you said I won't. In your pride and in your arrogance, you decided that you were strong enough to handle it. That you could walk into it. You had tasted it before. Oh, no, I'm not good. But you're going to hang around it. Am I the only one? Like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But you know you're not good, and so you go test the water. He looks at him as if to say, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him. Now he remembers. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me not once, not twice, but three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When I was growing up in Alexandria, Louisiana, yeah, in Ellick. For those of y'all who know, when I was growing up in Louisiana, I would spend a lot of my summers and a lot of my time and just a lot of my free time in the country. We got 200 acres of land on my dad's side of of farmland, heavy farmland. You can see the picture of it behind me. That's it. That's the family farmland. And one of the things that I loved about it was being able to hang out with my cousin. We was doing some crazy stuff, breaking chicken eggs and running and all kind of crazy stuff. But one of the things that I mostly remember about this process, one of the things that's completely is is, is, there's some great memories about it. This is one of them. This tool shed is a tool shed that my great grandfather built. It still stands today. One of the things that I loved about it is he could always go to the shed and get what he needed to do whatever was the purpose for what what he needed to accomplish that day. It didn't matter if he needed to fix the tractor. It was there. If he needed to put a ring in a hog's nose, it was there. 
I'll tell you I'm country. Just a little bit. I can clean it up a little bit now. But I'm telling you, I, I ran in dirt roads, bare feet, getting nailed. Okay. That kind of country. But one of the things I remember mostly about it was a, a crazy rooster. There was a crazy rooster that was always part of the process. And it didn't matter what time of day, it didn't matter what type of the, the, what type, what hour, it didn't matter what minute. That old crazy rooster didn't care what you had going on. It would do what it was called to do, regardless of what you had going on. It would move in and out of what it was doing without you caring about where you sleep. It didn't matter. What were you doing? It, it didn't matter what was happening in that process. That rooster didn't care. So what we talk about in this process, yeah, it's annoying, but this is what happens with that old rooster. Because what is happening in this process is we talk about the first crow. We talk about Peter hearing the first crow, but what about the memory of the second crow? So now you're stuck. He might even be a little mad at God because now you gave me something that's going to remind me every second every minute and every hour of the day it doesn't matter where it's gonna come from it's gonna pop up when i least expect it but what it's gonna do is it's going to humble me in every position because that old rooster don't care and so i might i might be a little upset with god that you gave me something that i can never shake ever in my life but my arrogance and my tone put me in a place where he had to humble me immediately and he had to let me know, I am God. And I will do what I said I was going to do. And so Peter now, is he wept bitterly at the first crow. But we're talking about the dash. We're talking about the dash. All of that was to set us up for this moment. We're talking about the dash. That place between the resurrection and the coming of the Christ, the coming of the Holy Spirit, there is a place in that process where that rooster is going to keep crowing. It wasn't only the first crow, but it was every other crow. And our subject for today is he's here, he's speaking, and he's prepared to restore you. He's here, he's speaking, and he's prepared to restore you. The day before the crow, it didn't matter. He's going to keep crowing. Don't get, he's going to keep crowing. The day before, it was just a rooster. But now today, it's a memory. And it's a reminder. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It doesn't matter what stage I'm on. It doesn't matter what position I hold. Every now and then, that rooster's still going to crow. And if I don't find some Holy Ghost down on the inside, if I don't get the spirit of the Lord down on the inside, that crow of that rooster will run me crazy because I will hear it in moments where I thought I was good, where I thought everything was all right. Well, I'm doing great right now. I'm making more money than I ever made. I'm driving what I want to drive. And that old pesky rooster will show up and crow and remind me This is my crow. This is my rooster. Every rooster ain't denial. Let's, I'm, 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 I'm gonna make it live for everybody in here. So if I, I'm not at the street yet, come, I'm coming. I got GPS. We're gonna show up. This is mine. This one of the one of the things that is 
Y'all, I'm distracted by the rooster. Do y'all understand that? Because every time I go to make a point, I hear it call, I hear it crowing in the back. I couldn't practice this. Right? You can't practice life. You can't practice the moments after. You can't practice what's going to come after. But what you have to know is that in the face of it, regardless of what that rooster's doing, regardless of what's going on, remember Peter has a promise. Remember Peter, Peter has keys. Remember Peter has been given the, the, the life and death. So in spite of the rooster crowing, he still has the package. He still has everything he needs. Put that picture up for me, David. So we talk about roosters crowing. There's many different types of roosters. This is one of mine. This is one of mine. It's one of mine because that man is no longer here. I look like him. I sound like him. Ms. Vincent said the other day, they were driving and I was on Bluetooth. You sound just like your daddy. What they don't know is that's a rooster. What you have no idea about, Aaron shows up on Sunday. My position is ready. I'm working. I'm available. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And occasionally, I'll look in the mirror. And I'll see that man who's no longer here. It's a rooster. He never got to hold my daughter. He's a rooster. I can't call him and say, hey, Pop, I got a question for you. It's a rooster. I can't say, hey, man, I, 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 just, need to, I just need to hang out with you for a little bit. He taught me how to fish. He taught me how to, he taught me how to tie a tie. He taught me how to... I, I shined my shoes this morning, and it was a rooster because he taught me that. How many things are in your life? How many things? It could be the loss of a loved one. That's a rooster. Because you're asking God, why did you do that to me? I prayed. I believed. I wanted them to be healed, but they didn't. They weren't. And so you stand sometimes in that moment mad at God because he didn't do what you expected him to do. That's a rooster. And it never stops crowing. It never stops crowing. Who lost a job? Who's lost a home? Who has a, who has a child with somebody they didn't love? And now see that person in that child. That's a rooster. You can't love that child because you see him or her in that child. That's a rooster. Because every day of your life, they're going to show up and ask you for something to eat. They're going to show up and ask you for some money to go to school. But because you see them in him or her, that's a rooster. There's a disease that keeps coming back up. You've been in remission. This is the third time. That's a rooster. Because every time you look up, you're saying, God, what is going on? What is happening here? Why can't I shake this situation? Why can't I shake this problem? This is too much for me to bear. It's too much for me to hold. It's not always what you've done wrong. Sometimes it's what's life just lifing. And it leaves an indelible imprint in the memory and in your thoughts. And, in your, and it causes responses that are not of God, but they're to hold your heart. But it's to guard you from any more hurt. And so you shrink back. And people see you, but they have no idea what you're going through, what's happening. You're smiling, but that rooster is crowing. You're laughing, but that rooster is crowing. You're going to work every day. You're, with that, you're dealing with your coworkers. You're working with them. You're going out to happy hour. You're having fun, but they don't know that rooster is crowing. And so that third Jack Daniels was just to try to silence the rooster. 
You thought they was just hanging out, having a good time. But no, they're trying to silence that rooster. This brings us to John 21. All of that was the intro. Approximately 10 days after the resurrection and 40 days before the coming of the Holy Spirit, Peter is being tormented by the sound of the rooster. It is estimated on average that one rooster may crow between 12 to 15 times a day. One rooster. But one rooster, if you've ever been in the country, one rooster sets off another rooster because they're territorial. And so while this rooster is crowing, this other rooster is also crowing. And while that rooster is crowing, this other rooster is also crowing. So it's not just one that you're dealing with, but now you're dealing with your family that's acting the fool. Now you're dealing with that job you just lost. Now you're dealing with the loss of a parent or a loved one that you didn't know was going to happen. Now all of the roosters in your life are crowing all at one time. Peter's denial finds himself in John 21, and Peter is reminded a minimum of 120 times. If we just do the basic math, 12 to 15 times a day, times the number of days. If Jimmy had two apples and... <laughs> Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. That's a, that's, that's a rooster. How many of y'all are traumatic or got traumatized behind that? Okay. All right. All right. It's not just me. Peter made the biggest mistake of his life, and he's reminded of it constantly. And there's this time period where he doesn't know when that roost going to ever stop crowing. But what does he do? Let's look at it. John 21, 2 through 3. Y'all, I'm almost done, so come on, let's go. Verse 2, Simon Peter... Thomas, who was called Didymus, Nathaniel, and Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are also coming with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Be careful that you don't go back to the familiar place while the rooster is crowing. Be careful that you don't go back to what you used to do while that rooster is crowing. Because what you're doing is you're trying to find solace and you're trying to find comfort in what you used to be and what you used to do. Peter, Jesus had already told Peter, I'm not going, you're not no longer going to be a fisherman. You're going to be a fisher of men. And so what we see right here in the scripture, it says they did not catch anything. You're not going to catch what you thought you went to get because you're no longer that person. You're no longer in that place. So you can go and you can pick it up, but it's not going to be what you want. It's not going to fulfill you like you think you will. So you can go back to the club, but the beat just ain't going to be right no more. That Long Island ain't going to be what it used to be. You're going to find yourself sitting on the wall talking about y'all ready to go. It's too hot in here. It's too much smoke in here. It's too much light. It's too loud in here. Everything that used to have you getting in there and getting it, none of it is going to work. None of it is going to work. Be careful that you don't go back to the familiar thing looking for something to silence the sound of the rooster. If you're trying to drown out that sound, that's not the place to go. He looked for what he used to do as a mode of restoration. He was trying to rebuild confidence. But they fished all night and caught nothing. They were no longer fishermen. They were fishers of men. 
They were in the same place doing the same thing, but expecting a different result. That's insanity. They were in the same place doing the same thing, expecting a different result. That is the definition of insanity. The rooster was driving them crazy. One of the part about this, and this is not even here, one of the things you don't know, none of the other ones got a rooster. None of the other disciples. He said, all of y'all are going to fall away. But who got the rooster, Peter? So Peter's the only one. Y'all be careful who you go to fishing with. Because they decided they were going to go with him. But they have no idea what Peter's going on a trip to do. So you're following somebody who's trying to run from God. Be careful not to get in the boat with somebody who's running from God. Because now you've wasted your time and you've wasted your energy. And now you are up all night not accomplishing anything at all. But you did it because they was your friend. They did it because they was your homeboy. They, that's your line sister. That's whoever it is. You're hanging out. And y'all, because we cool, I'm not going to let you do it alone. Be careful how not to be so cool that you find yourself in a boat that's not going to produce. The problem with it all is they went fishing, but his spirit was not with them. Every time they had fished before, every time they had done anything before, anytime he had given them the power to cast out demons. He had given them the power to do miraculous things. But now Jesus is gone. The rug has been pulled out. His spirit is not there. So expect to go and catch something. And when God ain't there, that's a dangerous trip. Jonah, that's a dangerous trip. They went fishing, but his spirit was not there. He had not yet shown up on the scene. Because the Holy Spirit hadn't shown up yet. So they still needed him to show up. And he's not there. You chose to go fishing. He actually told you to wait on me in Jerusalem. And I'm going to show up. But you're trying to get out of the city because that rooster is crowing too loud. So I'll go out far enough away where I don't have to hear it. And I'll pick up what I used to do. Because I have expectation that this is going to help me heal. This is going to help me be delivered. This is going to silence that very thought. And it's a lie. It's a lie. Verse 4. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus, he showed up. Stood on the beach. Even though they went fishing and was supposed to be somewhere else, his grace, his grace still shows up. It still shows up right where you are. Because he didn't say he was going to leave them. He never said he was going to forsake them. He said he'll be with them always, even until the end of the earth. So he's showing up because his word can't come back to him void. So it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. If you have the heart of God, he's going to show up. He's going to come in. When the day was now breaking, the sun is coming up. Light is showing up. You were fishing through the darkness. But the light is now shining. And who is standing on the beach? Jesus. So Jesus said to him, children. Why you call them children, y'all? Because they were acting like kids. Y'all doing something I didn't tell y'all to do? Y'all went somewhere I didn't tell y'all to go? Children, you do not have any, you do not have any fish to eat, do you? So he asked him a crazy question that he already knew the answer to. They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will find the fish. 
you will, he said that you will find some fish. He said you will, it's important that you see he will find the fish. Okay? Don't run past that. So they cast it, and they were not able to haul it in because of the great quantity of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, and about 200 cubits away, dragging the net full of fish. One of the things that I want to say about this scripture, connect with people who will not let you go alone. Okay? I talked about them going with you, but praise them because they did. Connect with people who, did, who won't let you go alone, but more importantly, who can also recognize the voice of God when you can't. It's important to have people in your corner. If you're hanging out with the same chicks and the same dudes from college who don't know God and doing their own thing, can't none of them hear God on your behalf? If you up here and they right here, then you'll never get God from them. I'm not saying you got to cut them off, but bring them up a little higher. Invite them to church. Invite them to your small group. That's a little plug. Because what's happening is what we find ourselves, Peter did not recognize the voice of God. It says right here, he said, and he said to them, cast the net. And then we go down to verse 7. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved, talking about John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter hears the voice, follows directions, but doesn't know it's the Lord. He heard a voice, he followed directions, but he did not know that it was the voice of God. He's the one that's been affirmed. He's the one that's been exalted. He's the one that's been lifted up. He's the rock of the church. He's been given keys to the kingdom, but he can't hear the voice of the Lord. Why? Because the sound of the rooster. The sound of the rooster has consumed him so much so that the rock of the church can't even hear the Lord speaking. Men and women of God, we have to make sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that we don't let that rooster get so loud that it drowns out the voice of God beyond what you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the ruler over all things, heaven and earth. And what we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt is what he gave me here is going to accomplish here. I just need to get through this place here. And rooster, you cannot kill me in this place. You will not destroy me in this place. You will not hinder me in this place because I'm supposed to be over there. And when I get over there, God is going to grant me everything he said. Every promise, every desire, every heart's desire is going to be right there. But I can't die right here. I cannot die right here. That rooster will still crow. It will still do it what, it, what it's supposed to do. The rooster is living up to its purpose. It's doing what it's been called to do. And we, in the, even in the hearing of it, still have to do what we've been called to do as well. Because one of the things that the rooster has predators. There are things that still try to kill the rooster. But the, the rooster will climb up on the highest beam in the barnyard and it will crow no matter what's flying around its head. It will do exactly what it was called to do. It will defend its territory to the death. It will fight anything else that comes in to try to a hen or a chick, it will defend anything that tries to get to its family and tries to destroy its territory. The rooster, all it's doing 
is living up to its full potential. So all that is happening in your life is the enemy is living up to his full potential. In that issue, deception will come in and he'll sneak into that thing. God don't even love you no more. These people, not even, they're not even friends. They're not, they ain't even cool with you. They will, they will allow that, that, that hurt and that pain and that deception and that brokenness. He will feed in that place and will cause you to go over here when you're supposed to be over there. Connect with people who will not let you go alone, but who can also recognize the voice of God. And secondly, connect with people who, when you get out of the boat, will meet you with God. They will still have the capacity to help carry everything you caught. Everything they caught. Peter jumped out of the boat. But the rest of the disciples brought the catch in. So be careful about your group. And what y'all are dragging in. Let's go to verse 9. And we're almost done. We're there. So when they got out on the land. They saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Y'all, I told you I'm country, so a good fish sandwich is like. <laughs> Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have now caught. So Simon Peter went up and hauled the net to land full of large fish. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Even though he had told them to wait in Jerusalem, he found them right where they were. And provision was waiting on them when they got to land. He didn't need your fish. He was already prepared to feed you on land. He didn't need you to go fishing. He just needed you to wait in Jerusalem. He just needed you to wait on him. He just needed you to stay there and trust that it was going to all work out. But what he did is he still prepared breakfast so that your nourishment was taken care of. So let me tell you this. Jesus fed their natural man. They didn't even realize what they had caught. They had no idea what they had caught because the supernatural power that was on them the Bible says that they caught 153 fish 153 fish is in, in, when they did a study 153 is the number of species of fish in the water it's one of every type of fish. There's 153 fish in the net. He said, catch the fish. There's 153 types of fish in the net. He said, I'm going to feed you naturally, but what you just caught was what I sent you to be. The 153 is not slack of my promise towards you. The 153 is the fishing of men that I said you would accomplish. And while you hear the sound of the rooster, your catching of the net is still following everything I said you would do. And you have no idea that what you just did was fulfill the promise that I said you would fulfill. I'm going to feed, I got this covered right here. But you are still going to accomplish everything I said you would. And that 153. It says they brought the boat to land. 
But then Jesus said, go get the fish. Peter had supernatural power that it ran over him because they barely got the net into the boat. But the scripture says that Peter went and got the net. Y'all, we're looking at the details of this thing. It says, Peter, he says, Jesus says, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? No, not there. We're not there yet. Sorry. He says, Simon Peter went up. Verse 11. So Simon Peter went up and hauled the net to land full of large fish by himself. There was a supernatural power because this what he was destined to do is to haul a net of lost people by himself. They were all caught, but he brought them in with some supernatural power in that moment. He was able to bring them in by himself. And where did he take them? To Jesus. He didn't bring them to the other disciples. He didn't just drop them off on the beach. But he took that 153 and took them to Jesus. Be careful that you don't bring them to you, that you don't bring them to your prayer partner or your prayer group. Make sure that when you catch them, you bring them to Jesus. And we're almost done. And after all of this, it was by a fire that Peter denies Christ. Is standing next to a fire that Jesus restores Peter. The crow that signified failure is drowned out by the catch of 153 fish. So what was crowing in his mind, the memory is now replaced with the success of 153 fish. And so Noah, I'm no longer burdened because now I'm fulfilling purpose that God has given me. Everything he promised is before me. And now a fisher of men, Peter, would catch them all. We have to drown out the noise of our failure and our fears and surrender our fragmented focus to the potter who is able to put us back together again. He's with you even when you resort back to the familiar. He's speaking even when you don't recognize his voice. He's preparing for your arrival. He's restoring your strength and all he's needing is a confession of your love for him. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know all things. I love you. Then feed my sheep. He never said anything about the denial. He never said anything about the walking of away. After that first look, he never addressed it ever again. The only question he asked was, do you love me? Today, the Lord is asking, do you love me? That's simply the question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Are you ready? To one, silence the sound of that thing that's been burdening you to the place where you no longer are even connected to God. Where you can't hear his voice because it's been so loud. We are at a place now. We are in a house of healing. We are in a house of deliverance. We are in a house of breakthrough. So don't be here fishing and not catch anything today. Don't be here fishing and not lock into the presence of God that rests in this place. He's here and he's ready and he's willing to restore you right here. 
right here. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Our first call today is for the individual who simply doesn't know God. I've come into this place. Somebody invited me. I've been wrestling with this thing. God, I just really want to know you in a more personal way. But I don't know what to do. I don't know how to shake this thing. But you keep wrestling with it and wrestling with it. And he's saying, son, daughter, come. Son, daughter, I'm waiting. Come, come, come bring in the boat. I'm waiting on land. And I'm ready to feed you. But I need you to come. I need you to come. So for that person today who wants to know God in the pardon of your sins, for that individual today who said, today is my day, I can't leave here the same way that I came. But I'm going to surrender my life to you, Father, so that I can deal with these things that keep me so broken, so that I can step into the newness of you and receive the Holy Spirit. I want your spirit, and I need it now. I can't go another day without it. God, feel me. If that's you all over this place, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand in this place. God, I need you. I want to be saved. And I can't do this without you. All over this place, is there one? Raise your hand if you want to be saved today. There is time. There is one. He's worthy. And it's at that name that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. He's worthy. Is there one? Is there one? Our second call this morning is for the individual in the house. This rooster has been crowing in my life a little too long. And I'm ready to make a shift. I'm ready to drown him out. I can't do this, God, without you. But this thing just keeps going, and, and, it, it, and I need some help. I need to hear from you. In just a second, we're going to pray. I just need you to raise your hand. Say, God, I'm ready for change. Amen. God, I'm ready for rejuvenation. I'm ready to move past this place in my life. I've been stuck here too long. Amen. I've been stuck here too long. And I'm ready for change. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, touch every hand that is raised in this house. Move like only you can. God, move upon the face of the deep in this place. Every deep wound, move upon it, God. Every deep hurt, move upon it, God. Every deep issue, generational curse, move upon it now. Holy Spirit, come. That we may be healed, we may be delivered, and we may be set free. Every hand that is raised, God, thank you for their boldness. And because of their boldness, they got out of the boat and they're running to you, oh God. Silence the sound of that thing that is hindering them from walking into their future. We cancel the assignment of the rooster now that will come to steal, kill, or destroy. You come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And God, we stand in this place with great expectations of a mighty God to do miraculous things. God, have your way. Move upon the face of the deep now in Jesus' name. God, thank you that we will leave this place renewed, set free, healed, and delivered. We're not going back to the familiar thing. It won't taste the same. It won't look the same. 
It won't feel the same. But we're moving forward in you, in Jesus' name. And our final call today. Is there anyone in the house? You know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I've found my place. Transforming faith is home for me. I love how they love. I love everything about it. The word changes me, transforms me. Is there one? Is there one today that's saying, I know this is home for me? Is there one? You belong here. There's no other, you don't have to search any further. You don't have to look far wide. His presence dwells in this place. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. We praise and thank God for the word on today. Amen. Amen. We glorify him, we exalt him, and we lift him up. Hallelujah. Come on, transforming faith. Hallelujah. You deserve the praise. Oh, He's here. He's speaking. And he wants to restore you. There cannot be any restoration of God putting anything back together again without the voice. The voice inside of the voice, may I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, your life, my life is connected to the voice of God. And the whole ordeal about this rooster crowing is that God's voice is a hundred times louder than the rooster's voice. And it has to be that in your life. In Jesus' name, we've all made some mistakes. We've all made some bad decisions. We all made some wrong turns. But he, hey, but his voice is... You've been accepted in the beloved. I love you with an everlasting love. May I submit to you that I will replenish and I will restore you. In Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, everybody stretch your hand towards Hingston. We release an anointing of restoration. We release an anointing of replenishing. We release an anointing of revival. Thank you for everything you've said. Thank you for everything you're saying. Thank you for everything that you're about to say to him and in him. Father, we bless him with a 100-fold anointing of refreshing, of a turnaround in every dimension of his life right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to worship the Lord in our giving. Come on, let's get excited. Let's get excited. Hallelujah. It's going to work in your favor. Let's worship the Lord in our giving right now. If you need an envelope and you want to give by way of cash, raise your hand right now. If you have an envelope and you want to give by way of cash, keep your hands high so that the ushers can see your hands and they can get an envelope to you. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, if you're on YouTube, if you're on TikTok, wherever you are right now, you can give to this ministry. You can text TFCC to the number 77977 or you can go to Cash Out dollar sign transforming faith the bible says in genesis 8 and 22 as long as the earth remains there will always be seed time and harvest this means that if you put the seed in the ground your time for harvesting is coming back to everybody that's under the sound of my voice we give we give in this house not because we have to but because we get to because our father is a giver. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the first attribute of love is giving. So we demonstrate the first attribute of love by giving. We are excited to give. We're not forced to give. We are happy to give. We don't have to give. We know that giving is a part of his nature. And because giving is a part of his nature, giving is a part of our nature too. He says in 2 Corinthians 9 that if you give sparingly, 
you will reap sparingly. But if you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, we are givers in this house. And this is our opportune time to worship the Lord in our giving. You can go right now and you can text TFCC to the number 77977. Or you can go to Cash Out. And you can go to Dollar Sign Transforming Faith. And you can give your tithe. You can give your offering. You can sow your seed. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you can stand to your feet. We're thoroughly convinced and fully persuaded in this house that every blessing of the Lord is voice activated. Let me say it to the ones who didn't hear that. Every blessing of the Lord is voice activated. If nothing is said, nothing will be released. God spoke the worlds into existence so we can speak life, blessing, and anointing over our tithe, our offering, and our seed. To everybody, son, the sound of my voice, hold your seed in the air, hold your phone in the air, open up your mouth and repeat this behind me. Say this, as we give our tithes, as we sow our seeds, as we give our offerings, we are actively believing God for jobs better jobs raises bonuses and benefits an increase in sales an increase in commissions settlements being favored on our behalf estates and inheritances being released unexpected income being released rebates and returns checks in the mail gifts and surprises finding money debts paid off expenses are decreasing Blessings and increase are flowing in us, flowing through us, and flowing all around us. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. I thank you, Lord, that I have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a giver. I am a seed sower. And you said you give seed to the sower. Now fill me with more seed to sow. Father, in Jesus' name, I bless every giver. I bless every tither. I bless every seed sower. To the person that had a desire to give, but they just didn't have it. Father, I bless them right now with a Father's blessing of open doors and a fresh opportunity for brand new income to come into their lives. Make it happen expedient and without delay to every giver, to every seed sow, and to every tither. I speak a 100-fold anointing over your tithe, over your offering, over every dimension of your life. Let the anointing of restoration be on it. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. To everybody that is under the sound of my voice, before I go any further, before I release us all, I have some people that came on this day also. I got my family from Alabama to the left. All my aunties, my cousins, they are here right now. My aunties, just wave at me, auntie, if you don't mind. How you doing? Well, I got a first cousin that's getting married on today, and so they came in from Alabama to worship with us at Transforming Faith Christian Center. I love y'all. I honor y'all. I celebrate you. I appreciate you. To every guest that was here, first time, this is your first time you're a guest, raise your hand. First time you're a guest. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to every first time guest. Listen to me every first time guest. We, me and my wife, we would like to meet you in the guest lounge directly across from the, uh, from the sanctuary. It's a, uh, it's a glass door. It's the guest lounge right across. Could you come as soon as service over? We want to shake your hands. We want to meet you. And we just want you to uh, just know our hearts and who we are. And we just want to talk to you for one split second. We actually have a 10-minute party just for you. If you would just come over here and just meet us. To everybody else, am I missing anything? Yeah. If anybody needs prayer, if there is anybody in the house that needs prayer right now, intercessors, if y'all don't mind, come forward right now if you don't mind. Houston, come up in the front too if you don't mind. Intercessors right now. There may be somebody right now that you really feel like that you need somebody to intercede for you in the midst of whatever you're going through. The rooster may be crowing as of now. And if that is you, we want you to just come to the front and we want somebody and we will have our intercessors pray for you to everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Wednesday night, 
Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, we are back in Bible study this Wednesday night, and I want to welcome everybody out on the night. We're in a series in Bible study talking about the Holy Spirit. We're in a series on Sunday morning talking about hearing God's voice. They flow handily together. I want to invite you, and I want you to make it your business. Come out on Wednesday night, and next Sunday we will resume part two of this new series entitled, Lord, I Want to Hear Your Voice. If the Spirit of God is in you, this means that the Spirit of God don't necessarily want to speak from the outside. The Spirit of God wants to speak from the inside. And if you know how to hear his voice, it's a whole lot of things you wouldn't be running to me asking me to pray for. My assignment is to teach you how to hear the voice of God for your life. We ain't trying to raise no babies. We are raising generals. We are raising up an army that we are called to go destroy the works of the devil. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice meet me and my wife right next door to the back in the guest lounge y'all can open up your mouth and you can repeat this behind me you can say this i am a faith giant i walk by faith i talk by faith i move by faith i decide by faith and i live by faith i will have a great week because of my faith i have great favor because of my faith and i will execute my god-given mission because of my faith. We'll see you all next week.